Every day at this time, we bring you dramatized stories of excitement, romance, and suspense from the files of interesting and fascinating people. We present The Veil of Darkness, a story of violence and intrigue by Ron Evans. They're fighting blindly. And they're all around us. Drop your weapons and show yourself. We could try and run. No, we would not get ten meters. I think this is the time for bluff, not fighting. This is your last chance. Hold your fire. We're coming out. Torches flashed from different directions towards us as Joseph, Maria, and I stood up and came out from the trees where we had taken cover. When the Yugoslav partisans saw us, they began to move closer. They had expected to see olive green German uniforms. Instead, they were confronted by three ashen faced civilians. Guns were leveled at us as three of the partisans searched our bodies and the two knapsacks we'd been carrying. Our hands were tied behind us, and not a question was asked. The man in charge told us to follow him along the valley. Having seen no more than ten minutes ago the bound and executed bodies of three German soldiers, we wondered if the same treatment was in store for us. marched for some 15 minutes along a dark, barely distinguishable trail. Then suddenly we came out into a wide clearing where many partisans were milling about. To one side of the clearing was a small peasant house. We were taken inside and locked in a bare room. A few minutes later, a tall, thin man entered and stared us up and down. Who are you? I'm Lieutenant Paul Sale, attached to British Intelligence Services. Oh, an Englishman, huh? And these are my two guides. What are you doing in my territory? Passing through to the north. Your territory? I am Algar Pavchek. Ah, oh, pleased to meet you. I was told that if I ran into your partisan group, you'd be helpful to me. Oh, yeah? Who told you that, Lieutenant? Uh, my coordinating officer, Colonel Egan. I have very little to do with British intelligence these days. They appear more interested in supplying arms to the monarchists and republicans, which is a mistake for which they will soon be sorry. Uh, well, uh, now that I've established my identity, can we be on time? You have established very little, Lieutenant. I think we will have a private talk. Bruno, come in here and interrogate these two prisoners. Yes, comrade. You will follow me, Lieutenant. I have a more comfortable room for our tete-a-tete. -tete. Uh, does it really matter why I want to reach Rajak Pass? If you want to be successful, yes. We are fighting a life and death struggle against the Germans, the monarchists and the republicans. We are winning, yes. But I cannot allow strangers to pass through my area of control without knowing their purpose. You'll have to be satisfied with my word that what I'm doing is for your... Well, your benefit as well as ours. It is said that an Englishman's word is a solemn bond. And yet... We are fighting the same enemy. So why would I lie to you? When you talk of the same enemy, you refer to the Germans. But the monarchists and republicans are my enemies too. Yet your people help them. That is not in my interest, is it? Lieutenant, I need to know more about your mission. I... I can't tell you. Uh, you are choosing to be difficult. I'm following my orders. And if I have the truth tortured out of you, I will be following my instincts. I've no choice in the matter. Ah, you have been trained to resist interrogation, yeah? But of your guides... I'm sure they know the details of your assignment. Yes, I could have them tortured and then shot. Would you like that, Lieutenant? No. But they will talk, I can guarantee it. Perhaps so. And I will know the facts, and you will have thrown away their lives for nothing. Is it worth your silence? Let me put it to you like this, Pacek. 
I'll give you my word that what I'm about has nothing whatsoever to do with helping your enemies. It... No, Lieutenant, your word is not enough. Now, let me see. What is there in Rajak Pass, as you call it? Ah, there is a small Republican partisan group operating a few kilometers to the east of Rajek, but they are of little importance. <laughs> Quite a puzzle, isn't it? Oh, it is a great puzzle, Lieutenant. And I shall not be happy until I know the answer. Ah, ah, wait. Yes, here it is. Ah, an intelligence report of Russian origin. Now, my curiosity has really been whetted. Two days ago, a battalion of Waffen SS was reported heading west from Nitschik towards the mountains. Now, why would Germans commit an SS battalion to go that way, huh? When they are hard pressed by our Russian comrades on the eastern border. Really, Lieutenant, the suspense is causing me physical discomfort. Are you in radio contact with any of the Allied intelligence services? I am in contact with all your intelligence services, including the Russians, as I have demonstrated. Very well. Then there's a simple answer. Call up British intelligence, and they'll give you my credentials and tell you all you need to know. What I need to know and what I want to know are two very different matters. Why is an SS battalion heading for Ratchet? It's bad news to know about the SS. Ah, you didn't know. I didn't, and it makes my mission even more urgent. <laughs> Let me give you a drink. I have some scotch whiskey here, left by an American liaison officer seven weeks ago. Uh-huh. Uh, where is he now? Captain Steiner? Uh, oh, I warned him about wandering into a monarchist area. From what I hear, he fell into Carrasco's hands and was shot. It was his name. They said it was German, and he was a German spy. Poor fellow, an idealist. His mission was to arrange a truce and an eventual peace between myself and Karesko. Huh. An impossible task. Uh, it isn't going to be easy drinking with my hands tied uh, unless I try it through a straw. <laughs> oh, now, that is funny. Uh, here, let me cut you free. Uh, thanks. <coughs> I had forgotten. Uh, oh, that's better. Now, I mm. think it would be wise to tell me what attacked you to Rajek. You say it is urgent, yet I could hold you here indefinitely, even until the Russian army arrives. It could cost the lives of many people if you do. It is war. We are surrounded by death for three years. It has become a way of life. Now oh, come, drink. What is it you English say? Uh, cheers. Yes, cheers. There, there is another way. I could keep you here while I send a small group of my men to Ratchet to find out your secret. Oh, that could take days. Oh, a week before they return. I know. I know. You are preparing a site for the landing of British paratroops. Well, am I right? You're quite wrong. This is becoming a guessing game, Lieutenant. Yes, and precious time is being lost. You are losing it. I can continue guessing all night and all day tomorrow, but... If you tell me the truth, I will let you go on your way if your mission is as innocent as you claim. If your information is so good, I'm surprised you haven't been told about the other armed group which is operating in the Rajik area. Another armed group? You mean partisans? No. Oh, let me look at these intelligence reports again. No, no, no. Ah, what is this? Escape prisoners of war. <laughs> yes! That is it. May I ask what it says? It reports that a group numbering approximately 200 ex-prisoners and internees are slowly moving towards the Adriatic. There have been several small actions where resistance has been met en route. They are well armed and living off the country. <laughs> I am advised not to interfere with their progress should they enter my territory. Where does that report come from? From where all my most reliable reports originate, Russian military intelligence. Mm-hmm. You are on your way to join up with these fugitives? I'll give you ten points for a right answer. Oh, you English amaze me. Why was it so important for you to hide the truth, huh? These fugitives are of no interest to me. Had I told you the truth right away, would you have believed me? No. But why should I believe you now? Because it's the truth. <laughs> the truth. Oh, you are a very devious man, Lieutenant. Why would you want to join up with a lot of escaped prisoners, eh? You would have done better by staying at home. It's rather a confusing mix-up, actually. Earlier, they were in contact with intelligence, but, uh, well, something must have gone wrong with their radio. 
They'd been given orders to head for Rajik Pass, and from there to the Adriatic, where they'd be picked up by a flotilla of small boats. Oh, go through Rajik to the sea. <laughs> ah, British intelligence must be crazy. <laughs> there is no way out. It is like a bottle. Yeah, so it was discovered. But intelligence have been unable to contact the group to countermand the order. Uh, I've been sent to divert them away from Rajek and lead them to a place just south of Dubrovnik. Ah, they will not reach the shore. There is a heavy concentration of German troops both north and south of Dubrovnik. Yeah, I've since been warned about that. The whole thing's a mess, actually. But I've been told from a reliable source that there is indeed a way through to the west from Rajek. A narrow goat track leads over the mountains, but few of the peasants know the way. I have never heard of it. I want to see what your guides have said. Please stay where you are if you value your life and the success of your mission. Friends tell the same story. You haven't tortured them? No, not quite. My men were on the verge of doing so. Are you now satisfied I was telling the truth? Yeah. Good. Then will you help us on our way? Ah, now that is something else, Lieutenant. All right. All right. If you don't want to help, at least give us a safe conduct through your area. I want to know something first. This map was found in one of your bags. It has been very carefully drawn and accurately shows the areas controlled by myself and my rivals. Where did it come from? Does it matter? It matters a great deal, Lieutenant. I recognize the style of Upak. Did he give it to you? Yes. When? The night before last. Upak is dead. Did you kill him? No. Upak was a good friend to us. His farmhouse was set on fire, but his body was pulled out by one of his workers. He had three bullet holes in him. Can you explain what happened? No. Now, I know you are lying. His workers say that three people, an Englishman and two Yugoslav agents, have taken shelter there for a night and a day. I want to know why you killed him. I didn't kill him, I tell you. Why should I? Ubak was important to our intelligence network. This matter must be closely investigated before I can allow you to leave. Oh, for heaven's sake, Pavzik, what about my mission? I don't care about your mission, Lieutenant. I care for my old man who was a friend and a helper for many years. If I am satisfied that you didn't kill Ubak, then you will be allowed to go free. But if I find evidence to the contrary, you and your guides will be executed. Before I could realize the full implication of what Pavchek was saying, his revolver was out of its holster and pointing at my chest. He shouted an order, and two of his men came into the room and took hold of me. I was hustled into a room furnished only with a crude bed and mattress. There I was left to contemplate my bleak future. I felt certain that under pressure, Joseph would tell his interrogators that it was Maria who had killed Ubak. It's a relief to know they haven't moved yet, nor likely to until dawn. How did your mind lane go? Oh, great. I went back along the trail to place Dimitri setting his ambush. It's an ideal place. I reckon he and his men could hold up the Germans for oh, a couple of hours at least. Especially now that Kovacs and his partisans are taking a hand in it. And the mines? Well, I went back about a kilometer and set 30 in groups of five. When the Germans make a run through the ambush, they'll drive straight into them. What type are they? Well, Kovacs must have gotten them from your people. British type, you know. Oh, well. yeah, 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 good, good. They're very powerful, enough to disable a tank. Mm -hmm. For my part, everyone's ready to move out. And naturally, this led to an altercation with Lady Agnes, who believes sleep is more important than keeping ahead of the Germans. Uh, you can always let her stay and face up to him herself. My very suggestion to her. 
And she backed off? On the contrary. She told me to give her 30 of my best men, and she'd deal with these nasty Nazis herself. <laughs> nasty Nazis? Her words, Saunders. I pointed out to her that perhaps the women and children were a greater priority than her playing the part of, a, of an avenging Bodicea. <laughs> anyway, enough of the truculent Lady Agnes. I've sent the French, the British, and the Americans ahead to check the route. Three partisan girls offered to act as guides. Now, this damned Rajek Pass we're ordered to go through on our way to the Adriatic. Yeah? One of these partisan women told me there was no way through. Okay. At the western end, we'll be faced by a tall, impassable mountain. But there must be a way through. No, I'm sure our intelligence people wouldn't make a mistake like that. I don't know. This girl seemed to know the pass rather well. She says... The local name for it is the Veil of Darkness. Well, if there's no way through, the SS could bottle us up inside and <laughs> turn us to ground beef. I'll have to take the risk. When we get into the pass, the men can scout around to find one of the locals. Then we'll get at the truth. Don't forget, these peasants are still living in the 15th century. Mm. 80 miles to them is like 10,000 miles to us. This woman's only told me what she's heard, not what she knows to be true. Well, it's nearly four, sir. I'd better get back and watch the action. Yeah, lucky fellow. I'll have to stay here and shepherd the flock and Lady Agnes. <laughs> Good luck, sir. I'd rather fight the SS. I'd been locked in the room for no more than ten minutes when the door was opened and Maria and Joseph were roughly pushed inside. Uh. Oh. Paul. Paul, you're still alive. Shouldn't I be? They said you were to be executed. Oh, well, that's in the future. Are you both all right? No. They gave me a bit of a beating. Oh, no. Then they asked me if I killed Ubak. Uh, what did you say? At first I denied it, but it was as though they knew. How did they know, Paul? I didn't tell them. I am sorry, but it was me. So you are the traitor. No, they were about to start cutting off my finger joints one at a time. And they meant it. So you babbled everything to them. Why, Maria, little... sit down here with me. But you I... You brought this on yourself. You... Why should I be tormented to cover up her stupidity? We'll all pay for it just the same. Popchik's really bitter about Hubak's death. Apparently they were old friends. Oh, how was I to know that? You shouldn't have done it, Maria. It would have been all right if we had gone farther to the west, as I advised. It would have been all right this way if you hadn't killed Ubach. Now all we have to look forward to is a firing squad. No, Paul. There will be no firing squad. Why not? When I admitted killing Ubach, I was taken to see Pavchik. He told me the mercy of a bullet was too quick, too honorable. I am to be hanged in the morning. What? I think he must have meant all of us. <sighs> now I understand why there's a high mortality rate of intelligence officers sent into Yugoslavia. No matter what they do, they're always somehow in the wrong. Only a man who has been sentenced to death can really know what it's like. You're trying to think of a way out, but intruding into your mind are other thoughts. You begin to think of the girls you once knew. The family that you'll never see again. The sunshine. Flowers. Having a ding-dong drinking session with the boys. All the silly things you've done with your life. Then you begin to wonder what it'll be like. Is there really a life hereafter? Or do you become no more than a mosquito squashed on a wall? I think my two companions were expecting me to come up with the answer. But they were wrong. Lieutenant, I suppose this woman has told you your fate. Yes, and I must protest. It will do you no good. And why are you here? To tell you that I have contacted your military intelligence and reported your presence. They have confirmed what you told me about your mission. Did you tell them that the mission had failed because you're hell-bent on revenge for Ubak's death? No. Instead, I tried to make a bargain with them. More supplies in exchange for your life. Did they agree? Hmm. The matter is being discussed. What about Maria and Joseph? Only your life is being bargained. No, you must include Maria and Joseph. Nor what? You will refuse to leave without them and so jeopardize your mission? Oh, Lieutenant. No matter what bargain your people strike with me, their lives are forfeit. I let you know when I hear more. Now, wait a minute. I... I'm not... There's nothing you can do for us, Paul. 
We are dead already. I'll, I'll insist. I want to use his radio and talk to them myself. Pavchik would never permit it. I'm sorry for all this, Paul. I know I'm to blame. And I'm glad you can admit it. Oh, what's done is the past, Maria. It's what has to be done soon that really matters. You must continue with your work, Paul. I only hope that Joseph can hold his head as high as I hold mine when that noose is put about our necks. Oh, don't talk about it, Maria. I will have only one regret. Paul, I love you. Oh, Maria, I... Shh. I know it is not so with you. We spent only a little time together, but it was enough for me to know the truth. All I ask is that you hold me. Yes, close like this. Look at me, Paul. Into my eyes. See it for yourself. Maria, please stop it. You're embarrassing him. No, no, no. Leave her alone, Joseph. It's all right, Maria. I understand. Joseph, have the human decency to face the wall. Maria quivered in my arms like a frightened puppy. I couldn't be sure whether it was fear or her passion. She clung tightly to me. Joseph, who'd been sitting on the floor in a corner, dutifully turned to face into it. And then Maria's lips were on mine. Her long fingernails biting into my skin through my shirt. She pulled me down onto the mattress and then... You, Englishman, come. Comrade Pavchek is waiting. Maria froze and glared balefully at the partisan in the doorway. I stood up and went with him, not daring to look behind me. I was prodded into the room where Pavchek had interrogated me earlier that night. He was sitting at a table and kicked out a chair as I approached. Yeah, Lieutenant. You see what is left in this bottle of scotch whiskey? Yeah, it must be finished before I let you go. You... you made a deal? <laughs> Fifty tons of supplies will be flown in tomorrow night. You know what I will do then, huh? No? Tell uh, me. I will lead my men against those capitalist monarchist pigs. I will have the pleasure of personally dismembering that mountain bandit Karasku. The supplies are intended to help you to fight the Germans like you did today. They are all my enemies. And that includes the people who sent them if they try to interfere. Oh, it's sheer madness. Political idiocy. The kind of madness that creates wars. A drink to your safe journey. Uh, what about Maria and Joseph? Their lives are beyond negotiation. We'll see about that. There's still more than half a bottle of whiskey to drink yet. How do you sing it again? Oh, again? The stars at night are big and bright. Deep oh. in the heart of Texas. Texas reminds me of the one well, I love. Deep in the heart of Texas. Texas. I, uh, oh. uh, I can't remember the next word. Here, yeah, have the last rope. I'll check. We've had a good session, and I can see dawn coming up through the window. Uh, you know what that means, hmm? Oh, don't remind me, Lieutenant. Another day. Uh, I know where there is a bottle of peach brandy. No, no, no. Oh. I, I couldn't drink any more, thanks. Uh, I just... I just... <clears throat> I just want to ask for one thing, Patrick. Uh, the lives of my guides. Oh, that is two things. <laughs> Yes, and uh, ah. you know what I mean. Both of them. Ah, uh, you have taught me a very good song. I will spare one of them to go with you. Ah, now, which one? You like the woman, huh? She is pretty, and those dark eyes, oh, such promise. Both of them, perfect. Choose, Lieutenant. I can't. Ah, you are sentimental, and this is war. People die. Our people gave you a good bargain, Pavchek. How generous and merciful can you be in return? Hmm. Are you a good gambler, Lieutenant? What do you mean? 
Do you see this box of paper clips? Uh-huh. Would you say the number inside is odd or even? Now, if you can guess correctly, then I will let your companions go with you. But if you are wrong, then it will have to be the hangman. You can't be serious. Odd or even? A tree. Choose. Odd or even? Odd. Ah. <laughs> now count them for yourself. Huh? <laughs> Forty-eight. Ah, it's a pity. Please do come outside with me to watch how bravely they die. The Veil of Darkness was written by Ron Evans, produced by Yolan Dotman, and directed by Henry Diffenthal. Dossier, dramatized for broadcasting and brought to you on Springbok Radio.